your Bibles, <clears throat> open them to Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. And I remember the last time we were together, we were finishing up a series of messages entitled The Covenant of Blood. So um, we're going to go a little further, but, um, you know, take a look, look at the blood in a different, uh, different way, kind of take a turn, if you would. And let's look at, study the scriptures and see the power that has been made available to us by the blood of Jesus. Amen. So in that case, no matter what stage of growth you'll find yourself in, we can and do receive all the blessings that God has determined for us. How? We just simply apply God's blood he gave us. So let's take a quick, quick scriptural journey in the word of God because the Bible said faith cometh by hearing. Amen. And hearing by the word of God. And see why we need Jesus' blood. Amen. Genesis chapter 2 verse 2 says, And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his works which he had made. Now we see in scripture here that when God rested, he then did what? He, he gave everything that he had made to man. He put man, amen, as custodian of the earth and God rest and so you understand and we're not going to go into all of that you understand God's ultimate plan from man so God stepped back amen and I believe for a thousand years gave man instructions before he gave it to him gave taught man what he needed to know and of course as law giveth, man taught the woman. Now look at Revelation chapter 17. Now, of course, you know, because of the fall, Adam and Eve took everything that God gave them and turned it over to Lucifer. Amen. So in Revelation chapter 17, verse 8, the Bible said, the beast that thou sawest was, and notice what he said, was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit. So um, the prophet that's showing John around heaven is telling him that what's operating in the earth in John's day was this beast that was operating. The things that were done to the churches, how the churches were scattered throughout Asia Manor. So he said, is this bees? Then he said, and is not. In other words, there will, be a, there will be a pause, a stopping of the works of this bees. But then, and again, it will again once ascend out of the bottom of his pit. So I believe John was speaking to our day. And go into perdition. Remember, Judas was called the son of perdition. Why? Because Judas walked in truth and openly, plainly rejected that truth. He rejected that truth. Now, here's a scary, scary, scary part. Because he will not let the Lord deal 
with the stuff in him. With the weakness in him. And so John is telling us in the day to come, especially in our day, the church in the wilderness, we have been in the wilderness, so to speak, for thousands of years. And you've heard me say often that as you follow the life of Jesus, as you follow the life of the church through the wilderness, the same pattern we see today in our own lives. So now we find ourselves, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ today, we find ourselves now at the border, as Israel did, the border of Kadesh Barria. They stood across the Jordan, looking into the promised land. When they finally went across, amen, Paul said they were baptized in the river of Jordan, being a type. Brothers and sisters, our baptism in this coming day will be a baptism of fire. Amen. It will be one of fire where God will thoroughly finish his work inside of you before he do what? Before he possess you. Now, God could have, they stood right there, saw the land. God could have said, I'll take the angels and clean out the land for you. But he didn't. Just as God was teaching them, amen, how to be kings and priests, he's doing the same thing to us. God could have, amen, once he purified your spirit, said, I will purify your soul as well. But he didn't. God said, you take the ground inside of you, your soul. Right? Through the process of overcoming. See, so the same thing that happened to Israel is happening to us. The same thing that happened to Jesus when he went into the wilderness and overcame is happening to us. Amen? And so we see, though, that this beast will play a major part in getting you to fail in taking the ground in your own soul. He is specifically, specifically called, he said, to go into perdition. Amen. Listen. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder. Now of all the things that they could wonder. Whose name was written in the book of life. But not just whose name was written. From the foundation of the world. When they behold the beast that was, is not, and yet is. Amen. So, the question to wonder about now and what they will be wondering about when all hell and darkness is released on the earth. The enemy will be going after truth wherever it is truth, wherever it is, is your name written in the, in the Lamb's book of life? Now, this is the most important question of your life here on the earth. As I said before, it's a very interesting statement John made out of all the things that were going on on the earth. In these coming days, somehow what will be far most on people's minds, though, in these coming days, is were, they na were their name written in the book of life. But again, not just written, but for before the foundation of the world. And you need, really need to, I'm giving you scriptures, you really need to meditate on them. Amen. Get the full revelation and impact about what God is saying because it will, it will be life to you in the coming days. So there will be something Something about man's psyche 
that will torment him to this end. Is, is my name written? Is my name written in the book of life? Now the scripture says, Jesus said, made this statement. What will a man give in exchange for his soul? We saw what Judas gave. Amen. And because of it, he received 30 pieces of silver. <clears throat> Judas gave his integrity and love for Jesus and told him what Jesus was. Now remember, keep in mind, he is called the son of of perdition. Now, Revelation 22. Revelation 22, verse 13. Jesus is speaking, King James, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments. That, always a prerequisite, that they might have a right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Now, if you read the, the scripture very closely, the first and second and third chapter of the book of Revelation, and then when you consider what the Bible says in the book of Hebrews about the old patriots, many of them are coming back to the earth. Not just Elijah, amen, but there was Elijah and Moses on the mount. Many of those who remain. Remember during the rapture, the Bible says, in the scripture, the Bible says during the rapture, the dead in Christ shall rise first, and those that remain shall be caught up. There are many who are hidden throughout the earth. John the Revelator being one, John never died. On the earth, he got his glorified body. He's hidden, and many other saints are hidden. And they will begin when the darkness runs rampant in the, in the earth. They will begin along with Moses. See, Moses didn't finish his. Many of them didn't finish their work. Elijah didn't finish his work. Come back to the earth. Amen. To help the church come into maturity. And one of the things that Moses will do, amen, is to reveal the commandments of God in the last days to teach us how to live during the tribulation period. Now, you think that in Revelations, right here, he's talking about the Ten Commandments, but he is not. Amen. This is one of the things that the coming of Moses would do. And just like God gave the Ten Commandments in the wilderness to teach them how to live in the wilderness. Amen? But before they even got it, they broke it. <laughs> so God instituted the ceremonial aspects of the law. So, but there are commandments that will be coming to us in the... Because, brother, sister, these days that are coming will be like no other days that we've ever seen. The evil upon the earth will be astounding. Amen. And so, can you imagine, can you imagine a task of trying to get people to see truth and those people think that you are 
the sum of the totality of untruth? Right? Was that ever played out before? In the life of Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And the very people he sent to, was sent to, thought he was the sum of untruth. <laughs> Ultimately, it cost him his life. Brother and sister, during this period of perdition, the very same thing will play out again. If many of you are around, amen, if it is the will of the Lord, it may cost you your life. But listen, to die in the army of the Lord is a great thing. To die as a martyr. It is a great privilege. Hallelujah. So, in retrospect to the blood, there's revelation that is coming to the body of Christ about the blood of Jesus that you will need to survive in the coming days. Amen. Because it is through the power of the blood that God will part waters, rain down manna. Amen. Cause fire to come out of the ground. I mean, all types of supernatural things for you to survive in the coming days. Because we will become the hunted. Amen. But there's a period of time in there Amen. Well, those that ripen first will step across, amen, into their immortal bodies. But you will still be operating in the earth. To what end? Amen. To try to win the rest of the, the, the saints, the church that has been caught up into the false church. Or that has become the false church. That have, that have begun to follow the Antichrist. And just like Jesus. <laughs> it's going to be very difficult. To try to convince them. That you have the way. That you have the way. The truth and the life. Amen. 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 So these are exciting times. Exciting times. It is the best of times, but it will also be the worst of times. So the Lord tells us in this, in Revelation 22, here that the gates of heaven will be closed to anyone whose name cannot be found in the Lamb's book of life. So the enemy's first and foremost target, I believe, is to keep your name out of that book. That in itself is a direct attack against the blood because that's what the blood came to do. Amen? To write your name in that book with his blood. In his blood. So... So we know that God is spirit, and so everything he created, every person he created, was first created in that world, the spirit world. Every blessing he has for you is there. So to be effective as a heavenly being in an earthly body, we must master the art of getting it from there to here. Now with that in mind, Keep this in mind. God created everything within himself before the foundation of the world. Everything. He saw everything from that perspective, including your life. Nothing is hidden from him, including your very thoughts. Nothing is hidden. So I know you're aware of this, and what I've been sharing with you is Basically, Christianity 101, all right? So, but we are laying a foundation to go through the scriptures and see God's unlimited power revealed in his blood. Because what? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. 
So look at John 1. Let's go through some scriptures. You know, there's no limit to God or his blessings for us. And he, he's going to speak to us primarily through the Bible. Amen. There are no other prophets. If they did not come in the name of Jesus. Are speaking for him. The blood is only saying what Jesus is saying. Amen. There will be a, a rise. And it's already begin to arise. A direct attack on the blood. See everybody that's come. Everybody that's coming with this book and that book and saying God is speaking here God is speaking there there is a direct attack against the blood of Jesus amen because the blood the word follows the blood amen and the only prophet amen that was given amen the authority and the ability not only to speak truth but become truth was Jesus Amen? Now, brother and sister, you say, well, what's the big deal? Brother and sister, over three quarters of the earth believe in other prophets. And that other prophets are speaking for God. They are not. If they are, then the blood of Jesus has no power. Do you hear me? This will increase. This is primarily what you must convince them of. It is the blood of Jesus that is speaking. In his blood only. First John. John, I'm sorry. John chapter 1, verse 1, the message Bible. It says, the word was first. The word present to God. God present to the word. The word was God in readiness for God from day one. Everything was created through him. Nothing, no, no one thing came into being without him. What came into existence was life and the life was Light to live by. The light life, the life light blazed out of the darkness. The darkness couldn't put it out. <laughs> Amen. He tried. He tried. He thought he put the light out and it sprung up. Huh? It sprung up in other places. When Jesus ascended, 500 had that light in them. <laughs> huh? And the more, and here's the wonderful thing about the light the more it is persecuted, the more it multiplies. This is why the devil can't win. <laughs> The church is growing faster in China and in Iran than any place in the world. <laughs> the church is. <laughs> because they are persecuted. China is sending Christians to, to re-education camps, they call it. If you put in God first, they are re-educating you. You must put government first. Amen. They have thousands in camps like that. But you can't, they can't put the light out. <laughs> the devil is stupid. <laughs> Praise God. And so, brother and sister, it's just like it's just like you as an individual. The more the enemy persecutes you, if you yield to God, the more his life in you will grow. Amen. Don't let him put it out by yielding to the flesh. So Jesus' blood, and this is what John is saying. Jesus' blood connected us 
to, or better way of saying it, made possible for the life of God to go inside of us. Now mind you know that this has not happened ever before to our knowledge. Ever. The first man God made came the first man God made, this life came inside, was Jesus. And because Jesus was God's son, his blood made it to the throne room. Jesus' blood. That connected him to man. And when that blood is believed upon, it brings the life of his flesh, which is God, to man. <laughs> so it is Jesus' blood that connects you to the life of God. His blood. Nothing else. The sinner's prayer only triggers that chain reaction. <laughs> Hallelujah. That no devil can put out once you pray it and believe it. Can put it out. Now, John 1, verse 14, the message Bible. I like the way it said it. The word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. <laughs> We saw the glory with our own eyes, the one of a kind glory, like father, like son, generous inside and out, true from start to finish. John pointed him out and called, this is the one, the one I, was, I told you was coming after me, but in fact was ahead of me. He, will, he has always been ahead of me has always had the first word. We all live off his generous bounty. Gift after gift after gift. We got the basics from Moses and then this exuberant giving and receiving, this endless knowing and understanding. All this came through Jesus the Messiah. No one has ever seen God. Not so much as a glimpse. This one of a kind God expression. Who exists at the very heart of the Father. Has made him plain as day. Y'all know Jesus looked just like God, right? Right? Yes, he does. <laughs> When Jesus came and laid in that manger, all of the creation, which had never seen God, came for the first time and pierced. Their eyes saw God. God dwells in unapproachable light. Hallelujah. And for the first time. Amen. As Zacchaeus climbed the tree, to see Jesus for the first time God's creation saw God now they are wondering what is God up to well, so, so some of these beings have been around for eons eons and there are some that are so close to God very powerful Beings that we don't know anything about. You know? Four and twenty elders, the sons of God, the watchers, different ones we know nothing about. These beings saw God. And there were some who knew spits and pieces of God's plan. But no one had the entire plan but the Son. And that plan surrounded you. 
Huh? It was a mystery. Remember last time concerning the covenant, Paul unveiled the mystery of all the patriots that shed their blood, the war that went on, the war that is yet going on in the spirit realm. It is for one purpose and one purpose only, the mystery, Christ, God in you. God has never, ever lived inside of his creation. He gave them their own life. <laughs> he gave the first man his own life. But his ultimate plan was to give a group of people his To live off. Now, I know that's hard to comprehend. You say, well, the life that he gave, isn't that God's life? It came from God. <laughs> it must be sustained by God. But the life that God came to give man, amen, is different than the life he gave angels. The life he gave the elders is different. Amen. He don't live inside of them. But he does you. This is what this fight is all about. This is what this war is all about. Remember, to make many like the one. To make many like the one. The first one. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, John shows us here then what Jesus looks like. Now, Hebrews 11, 3. The Message Bible again. By faith, we see the world called into existence by God's word. What we see created by what we see created by what we don't see, the message says. Now, when God comes inside of you, Ultimately, when he is manifested in you, when he takes his place inside of you as son, you are not only representative, you now become God's word. <laughs> you now become God's word. Do you see in the scripture where the angel of the Lord, when he came and spoke, he spoke in the first person. He spoke as God. And you, could, you had to read there and say, now who's talking here? Is it God or is it the angel? <laughs> it was the angel of the Lord. So, you, can hardly, you could not differentiate God from the angel. Now, that in itself is very powerful. But it's a whole different thing. See, there are angels. Angels are created for specific purposes and that purpose is their nature it's what not just what they do it's what they are amen you were created to 
to have his life, not your own. When he gave it to you, that life became your own. <laughs> it became your own. Just as when he created Lucifer, that life became his own. But you were created to have God's life. In so doing, not just become his representative, but become truth itself. Amen. He, the son, is growing up inside of you. Ultimately to become one with you. Huh? I in them, remember Jesus' prayer. I in them, them in me, that they may be one in us, the Godhead. This is what God is after. Not that you are a speaker of truth, that you become truth. Huh? That you become God's voice to his creation. Amen. As Jesus was God's voice to his creation on this planet. Amen. So this is what God is after. This is what the blood enabled. So, God will reveal him and prove to you his word is true. When we thirst for him, he reveals himself to us. So, why is it so important in the day that we live? Why? Because everywhere we turn, the world, as I said earlier, the world major religions are telling us God did not have no son. Huh? The fastest growing religion next to Christianity is Islam. And their mantra is God is what? What do they call God? Huh? Allah. And he had no son. That's their mantra. Huh? Well, God is Yahweh, and he had a son. <laughs> See? This is the challenge, brother and sister. This is what over three quarters of the earth believe. So, you must convince them he had a son, and that son shed his blood. And because of that blood, it has connected you to him. You must convince them of that. So, well, if God didn't have a son, then no blood came to this earth to save us. And only the blood of God's son can do that. Right? Now, John 14. John 14, verse 21. The Message Bible. The person who knows my commandments and keeps them, that's who loves me. And the person who loves me will be loved by my Father. And I will love him and make myself plain to him. Now what is he saying? Only love will reveal who Jesus is. And in revealing him, you become like him. Isn't that what happens? Revelation, amen, comes inside of you, is implanted and engrafted in you. Only love reveals who Jesus is and only then can you become like him. So that begins as what? Doing what he said. Right? It's not something religious. 
Come on. It's not something you quoting to me what Jesus said. You have to do what he said. When you do what he said, then the love of God reveals to you who this Jesus is. And you start becoming who he is. Amen. Brother, so this is why in Matthew chapter um, 28, I believe, this is why Jesus told us the first thing in this season of, what is the word I used earlier? Perdition. The first thing that the enemy will attack in your life is your love. It is the lack of love that will move men into perdition. It is the lack of love that will cause you to lose faith in God. Jesus put it this way, because iniquity shall abound, because man's weakness, his ancestral curses shall abound. How can it abound? Because darkness has been leased upon the planet, a great darkness. Because it will abound, it will attack the inherent love that's in you, even though you're not born again. We've met people that are not born again. They say, well, that's a good person. Why? The similitude of any goodness comes from God. Right? Just as we get our similitude of our fatherhood from Father God. We act like fathers because we came from a father. Whether we're born again or not. Okay? Okay? You take darkness out of, the, out of the world, then the goodness inherent in men will flow. It is the darkness that inhibits that. Well, goodness came inside of us. So we can trample on that that inhibits us from being good. I'm talking about born again people. Right? So Jesus is telling you that in the last days, your love for me, your love for the truth will be directly attacked by the weaknesses in your soul. It will abound and the love of me will wax cold. People will love their flesh themselves more than me. This is what he's saying. Amen. In the days to come, it will get worse. And he told Timothy, what? That they will be, they will hate those that are good. See, it is something inherent. When the love of God is inside of you, it makes you good. It's not something you can hide. And you will become a target, for, if for no other reason, because you are good. Do you hear me? We, we see it in a very, very small way today. It will abound. It will abound. Amen. And in many cases, you will have to hide. You will have to hide because you will be hunted before it is over. You will be hunted. It was no different from the early church. It will be no different to the end, at the end of the age and our day. Matter of fact, in that same uh, whole discord that Jesus gave, he said they will persecute you. They will throw you in jail. They will kill you. Huh? But he started off that whole discord when they asked him, when is the signs of your coming and when shall these things be? So Jesus took them from the present day where he was all the way into the millennium. That whole speech he gave in Matthew. But it will begin. It will begin by attacking the love that you have. So, brother, sister, 
And for no other reason, no other reason, it is imperative that you grow the love of God inside of you. That is the only thing that will save you in the coming days. And you grow the love of God inside of you by what James says. What did Jesus say? Doing what I say. Amen. Both written and spoken. Hallelujah. So, so what are we saying to you? We know, you know, but want to reaffirm this in your life. God came into us by way of the blood of Jesus. A special place we humans have no other being in creation has. Now, Malachi 4. Malachi 4. Malachi 4. Malachi chapter 4 verse 1. Count on it. The day is coming. Raging like a forest fire. All the arrogant people who do evil will be burned up like stove wood, burned to a crisp, nothing left but scorched earth and ash, a black day. Now, this is how ultimately it would end. But for you, sunrise, the sun of righteousness would dawn on those who honor my name, who do what I say. Healing, radiating from its wings. You will be bursting with energy like coats, frisky and frolicking, frolicking, you will trump on the wicked. There'll be nothing but ashes under your feet on that day. God of the angels' armies say so. The day of the Lord, that's our day. Remember, verse 4, and keep the revelation I gave through my servant Moses. Remember, Moses is coming again with commandments of God, how to live in the days to come. Keep the revelation I gave my servant Moses, the revelation I commanded at Horeb for all Israel, all the rules and procedures for right living, but also look ahead. I am sending Elijah the prophet to clear the way for the big day of God, the decisive judgment day. He will, now listen, this is what Elijah ultimately is coming to do. He will convince parents to look after their children and children to look up to their parents. What is the first thing that God, that the devil did when he came into the garden? He disrupted God's family. He brought dysfunction to the family. That's what he did. Amen. The blood began the restoration of that. But there is an anointing coming from heaven through the spirit and power of Elijah that will come upon the church according to Joel 2. And its ultimate end is to restore the family, amen, by removing the curse. Amen. So, so in Revelation, John said, we will overcome doing the period of great trials on the earth by the blood, right? So there is a revelation, again, of the blood that is coming from the teaching of Moses how to survive through right living in the last days. And Elijah is coming. The spirit of Elijah is falling on God's people to restore the family. Now, let me give you these scriptures. Write them down, amen, and meditate them on them throughout the week. Let's look at some things that the blood came to do. First, it came to cleanse us from sins. 1 John 1, 9, remember? If you confess your sins, God is faithful and just to cleanse you to purify you and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. It's the blood that keeps us in the light and in fellowship with God. The blood, right? The blood came to redeem us. Revelations 5 and 9. 
5 and 9. And they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and had redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred, tongue, people, and nation. Ephesians 1 and 7. In whom we have redemption. Through his blood, the forgiveness of sin. He tells you what, 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 what that redemption entails. That's not all it entails, but he points out specifically the forgiveness of sin. Amen. According to the riches of his grace. The blood came and gave us forgiveness of all sin. Hebrews 9.22, and almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission of sin. So the blood came, amen, not to cover, but to remit, to wipe away our sins. This is why God can look at you. Amen. In repentance and not see sin. <laughs> you can't lose, church. You can't lose. The blood came to sanctify us. Hebrews 10, 14. For by one offering, he had perfected forever them that are sanctified. He perfected. See, listen. God sees things complete. All right. You understand that, right? So when Paul speaks, he speaks in completeness. We know, amen, that we must walk this thing out, right? Experientially, it must happen in our life. So he perfected us. He made your spirit perfect and perfecting or maturing your soul. That's what he's saying. Hebrews 13, 12. Wherefore, Jesus also that he might sanctify the people with his own blood suffered without the gate. Amen. They didn't kill him inside the city. They killed him on Golgotha here outside of the gate of the city. Amen. Just as the scapegoat was sent outside of the city and died. Number five, his blood purge your conscience. From dead works. This is one of the most powerful scriptures on the blood in the Bible. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ. Who. Now here's the, here's the clincher. Through the eternal spirit. See the animals couldn't accomplish that. What they did could not become spiritual. But Jesus' blood, through the eternal spirit, offered himself without spot to God. And because of that, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. What dead works is he talking about? The works they did under the law. It was dead. They did it, but it was dead. Why? Because they were dead. <laughs> let's, let's, let's read it in, in the Message Bible. Throw a little more light on it. But when the Messiah arrived, high priest of the superior things of the new covenant, by bypassing the old tent and its trappings, remember the tent of meeting, in his created world, he went straight into heaven's tent. The true holy place. That's what Hebrews 7, 8, and 9 talks about. Jesus went into the heavenly sanctuary, sprinkling his own, his own blood, spirit blood, on the mercy seat. Now Jesus' blood has become an eternal fixture in heaven. You need to really get a hold of that. His blood is in heaven. <laughs> It is an eternal fixture of the throne of the Godhead, his blood. It has become the most powerful thing in the universe, his blood. 
You understand that? Because of what he did, it exalted him to a place in retrospect to the church. Jesus could not have taken this position as priest and king without shedding his blood. He had to. That was the only way to connect the human race. Not the race God created throughout the galaxies. The human race back to God. It was the human race that was destined to have God's life. He did it by way of his blood. Right? The life of the flesh is in his blood. Jesus' blood is where his life is because it is spirit blood. <laughs> Stop thinking of natural human flesh and human blood. I come that you might have life. How could he get that life to you? Because he poured his blood on the mercy seat. That life that's in the blood. See, you're not just spirit. Your spirit, soul, and body. See? His blood, because it touched the eternal spirit, can not only wash your spirit, but it can purify your body. It can give you an immortal body. <laughs> Hallelujah. It can, it can change all three parts of you. See? Hallelujah. <clears throat> so, the message says, the true the holy place once and for all. He also bypassed the sacrifice of consisting of goat calves blood. Instead, used his own blood as the price to set us free once and for all. If that animal blood and the other rituals of purification were effective in cleaning up certain matters of our religion and behavior, Think how much more the blood of Christ cleans up our whole lives, inside and out, spirit, soul, and body, huh? through the spirit. That's why it was possible, spirit, soul, and body. Christ offered himself an unblemished sacrifice, freeing us from all the dead efforts to make ourselves respectable so that we could live all Live all out for God. Hallelujah. So, number six, his blood came to purify us. To get close to God, one must be pure and stay pure. Ephesians 2.13, the message Bible. But don't take any of this for granted. It was only yesterday that you outsiders to God's ways had no idea idea of any of this didn't know the first thing about the way God works had the faintest idea of Christ you knew nothing of the rich history of God's covenant and prominence in Israel had a clue about what God shed what God was doing in the world at large but now because of Christ dying that death shedding that blood you who were once out of it altogether are in on everything. Hallelujah. <laughs> you are in on it all. Paul says, 1 John 3, 2. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. Now, Remember, the word of God is watched seven times. When God comes, those who are like him will see him as he is. Those who are not will see him only to the degree, the level of their purity. Amen? Chew on that a while. It is the same thing concerning revelation. Remember, Jesus is the revealed word of God. 
Jesus can stand here and speak revelation to all of us. And all of us hear it. But all of us will hear different depths and levels of it. In the same way, if Jesus stand here and peered, all of us would see him differently. Huh? Only a 100 watt bulb can be compatible to another 100 watt bulb. There's no compatibility of a 100 watt bulb to a 40 watt bulb. One puts out much more light in the same way. Amen. The sons of God only see him as he is. You see beyond the light that covers him. And you see behind the light. You see what's within the light. Just as Moses wanted to see. When he said, show me your glory. God was standing there shrouded with light. Moses, show me your glory. What he was saying was, I want to see past that light. <laughs> God said, no, no man can look at me and live. Huh? Only the sons will see him. As he really is. Only the sons. And as you see him now. This process is playing out in your life right now. You know that right? As you see him in the word. As you meditate the word. A part of him is pulled back. And you see him as he is. In the scripture. Huh? Do you hear me? I share the truth with you. And I say this, not with arrogance, but I see it much deeper than some of you. And to that degree, light drops inside of you. And to that degree, he is unveiled to you. You see an aspect of his character when truth is revealed to you. Amen. Just as the more you hang around a person in the natural, the more you get to know them. The more of Jesus' word revealed to you, the more you see him. Huh? Huh? There's two paradigms. Do you see it? There's two paradigms. Ultimately, you will literally see him as he is. But now he is being revealed to you. You see him with the eyes of your heart now. And so when he peers in the spirit realm next to you, huh? scales falls off your eyes and you see him clear. Your spirit sees him clearer. See, for Jesus to give you a revelation is to show you more of himself. And your eyes, how can I explain it? <laughs> it's kind of like this in reverse. You ever been in, uh, you ever been out you you been in the house where it's dark and then then you go outside where the sun is super bright and you go oh you can't see nothing till your eyes start adjusting huh the darkness leaves from your eyes so to speak and your eyes take in more light why does it do that to protect your eyes from being burnt. That's why it does it. In the reverse, darkness shrouds you. And you see Jesus only in a figure. Now, you think that if he appears, then you will see him as he is. No, you can't. Because his Glory will be turned down to the level where you can see. 
That's darkness, so to speak. You want to see him as he is, where his light and glory is not turned down at all. He shines brighter than 10,000 suns. And within that light is untold wisdom in mysteries. It shines in the face of Jesus Christ. So, if you have become compatible to him, when he appears to you, the moment you look at him, your spirit will begin to be flooded with mysteries, untold light, faster than light, untold mysteries. Because it's all in his face. He is the knowledge and the fullness of God. Well, in the same way, that is happening to you now, only in measures, line upon line, precept upon precept. Here a little, there a little. Huh? But the day will come when you will become a cookie cutter of Jesus. Where now, you know, your hard drive is unlimited. So now, all that God is can be downloaded into you as needed. Huh? What was the miss? What was the what was the key thing that captured Eve's attention? Ultimately, to her fall, what Lucifer said, you will be like God, knowing. See, she wanted to be like her husband. Her husband knew much more than she knew. But her husband didn't know all things. Only God knows all things. Huh? So, when you become one with him, endless Revelation flows through you. Endless. Endless. Because you become truth. Huh? And to know and to think something is to know it. To think something is to know it. The fullness of it. Huh? <laughs> this is what the blood made possible. I know it much more than I can, can, can try to explain it. Words don't do it justice. Amen. That's why it's the foolishness of preaching. <laughs> so, every man, now I said, this is why he says this, the last part of this. We shall see him as he is. And every man that has this, this hope, see, what I just said, you got to see it for it to create the hope. And every man that has this hope, Purify himself, even as he's pure. Only to the level you purify yourself will you see him as he is. Amen. So, the blood came to bless us. Communion means common union. We've entered into a union with him. He was the unleavened bread with no sin. He started that process in us. 1 Corinthians 5 and 7. Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. See, you know, leavened bread speaks of sin in you and growing and spreading. Okay? For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrifice. For us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. See, he tells us to keep the feast. The feast, amen, which is God's feast, reminds us that we are no longer leaven. Not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Paul put it this way, add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge and to knowledge brotherly kindness. On, the, on other words, 
you now who do not have sin in you, you are unleavened bread, so now you can add to you, to the life of God inside of you. Amen? And that life will become a part of you. God gave you the ability to bring sin under control. Amen. It's not running rampant in your life anymore. Like leaven does in bread. You put yeast in a little bit of bread, it goes throughout the whole bread. So let's say it this way. God took the desire to sin out of you. Out of you. Amen. So you are not of the old leaven. Number eight, the blood came to heal us. The stripes brought about the torn flesh that spilled his blood. First Peter 2.24, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin, that's unleavened. We being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were past tense healed. Amen. We were. If I were, I am. And if I am, I is. Amen. You must see yourself healed in order to become healed. That's what he's saying. That's the life of faith. So it is our sins and sin in general that made us sick. It is our sins and sins in general that made us sick. Number nine, the blood came to bring me into God's presence. Hebrews 10, 19. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. You ask, why do we need boldness? Because under the law, the priest was subject to fall dead. So they tied a rope to him. And when he walked toward the tent of meeting, he trembled. He trembled. He didn't know if he would fall dead going in. But we can have boldness. <laughs> Hallelujah. You're not going to fall dead. Why? Because of the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. The blood now covers the walls of your heart. We have been made the righteousness of God. Thank you, Lord. Number 10. The blood brings God's love to us. John 6 53. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Now this is how powerful this was, and this is how much Jesus meant this, because he didn't take, he didn't try to explain it away. He didn't say, well, it's kind of like, or it's, I'm speaking in, 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 in comparison. No, he didn't do any of that. He gave this message boldly, knowing that 72 of his disciples would become offended and walk away. And he didn't try to stop them. Do you hear me? The blood of Jesus is offensive to those who don't surrender to it. This is why the Muslims vehemently say Christ had no son. God had no son. The blood is offensive to any other religion other than Christianity. Because it's by the blood we have what we have. Amen. Brother, sister, you cannot compromise this truth. At all, ever. How can two walk together except they agree? The whole earth is moving to this very end. There are many ways to God. There is not. There is only one. That door is, has been washed completely. Douse is a better word. 
with the blood of Jesus. Amen. This is why demons so fear the blood. This is why they so fear it. Because God put the demise of demons, the destruction of demons into the hands of humans. <laughs> the very people they feed after, off of, is now their demise. The church needs to learn that. And thou will tread upon scorpions and all the power of the enemy. The very beings that feed off of the lust of your flesh, the works of your flesh, is now, you are their very enemy. You are. So if you live in the spirit and walk in the spirit, they have nothing to feed off of. Nothing. So this is why they, afraid, they fear the blood. It connects you to the power of God and their destruction. Amen. So, so he says, my flesh is meat indeed and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and I in him. I mean, this scripture right here you should meditate on for the entire week. Whosoever eateth my flesh and drinking my blood, had eternal life. Listen to what he's saying. Had eternal. This is not figuratively, brother, sister. The moment you say, Jesus, come into my heart. That's truth. That's the word. The body and blood goes inside of you. Remember we're talking about Last time, you just plead the blood, and it went inside of you. Amen. To eat means to believe. To eat means to obey. Amen. And then that word in you becomes a part of you, grows you up. And then in turn becomes your weapon, a two-edged sword. Amen. This is what Jesus would display when he returned. Out of his mouth would come a two-edged sword. He will take the blood and defeat the enemy. Hallelujah. So, Jesus didn't give an inch, an inch, only insofar as you eat and drink Eat and drink flesh and blood. The flesh and blood of the Son of Man. Do you have life within you? The one who brings a hearty appetite to this eating and drinking has eternal life. And will be fit and ready for the final day. This is the message Bible. My flesh is real food. My blood is real drink. By eating my flesh and drinking my blood, you enter into me and I into you. In the same way that the fully alive Father sent me here and I live because of him, so the one who makes a meal of me lives because of me. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is the bread from heaven. Your ancestors ate bread and later died. They ate angel food. Whosoever eats the bread will live always. See, the word drinks here means more than liquid. It means to take in eagerly through the senses or intellect. To take in. Amen. Amen. Verse number 11, the blood reconciled us to God. Colossians 1.20. He was supreme in the beginning and leading the resurrection parade 
He is supreme in the end. From beginning to end, he's there, the message Bible, towering far above everything, everyone. So spacious he is, so roomy that everything of God finds its proper place in him without crowding. Not only that, but all the broken and dislocated pieces of the universe, people and things, animals and atoms, get properly fixed and fit together in vibrant harmony. All because of his death, his blood that poured down from the cross. Everything that disobedience to Adam broke. Jesus' blood fixes. Amen. That's what he's saying. Two more scriptures and I'm done. His blood makes me a king and priest. Revelations 5, 19. So I look, message Bible. So I look and they're surrounded by throne, animals and elders, where a lamb slaughtered, but standing tall, seven horns he had, seven eyes, seven spirits of God sent unto all the earth. And all those things have different meanings in retrospect to you. The seven horns, the seven eyes, the seven spirits of God. All these things will be released as a weapon to you in the last days. He came to the one seated on the throne and took the scroll from his hand. The moment he took the scroll, the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped the lamb. Each had a harp, each had a bowl, a gold bowl filled with incense, the prayers of God's holy people, and they sang a new song. Worthy, take the scroll, open the seal, slain, paying in blood. You bought men and women, bought them back from all over the earth, bought them back for God. Then you made them a kingdom of priests for our God, priests, kings to rule over the earth. Now notice the elders have in their hands the bowl of the saints, the prayers of the saints. And it is those prayers, when the bowl is full, that will bring the fullness of time, and this scene will be played out in heaven. So that means something will happen in the earth. Zion will begin to travail. Amen. And the saints on the earth will fill these bowls in heaven. And it will trigger this scene. Amen. The fullness of time will come. The reason a lot of things are not happening, in essence, in heaven in, now, is because the saints ain't praying. They are not offering sufficient incense to move this time clock. But the time will come. The Holy Spirit will arise in his people. Amen. He will. The day is upon us. Number 13. The blood came to make us overcomers. The message Bible. Revelations 12 and 11. War broke out in heaven. Micah and his angels fought the dragon. The dragon and his angels fought back. But there was no match. They were no match for Micah. They were cleared out of heaven. Not a sign of them left. The great, drag, the great dragon, ancient serpent, the one called devil, Satan, the one who led the whole earth astray, thrown out and all of his angels, thrown out with him, thrown down to the earth. Then I heard a strong voice out of heaven saying, see, once the prayers of the saints start the ball rolling, these things will begin to happen. And where Lucifer makes his throne in that second heaven, Micah will come from the planet heaven down to the second heaven over the earth and clean out the second heaven. And all of the falling angels and Lucifer will fall to the earth. By that time, we are in the last three and a half years of the tribulation period. And they cry out, woe unto the inhabitants of the earth. Amen. If you are not here in a glorified body, you won't survive. But you are here in a glorified body moving throughout the earth to do what? To get people back to God. Amen. An exciting time. An exciting time of war. Huh? You are not only now warring through prayer. You are now side by side with the angels warring to praise God. Hallelujah. 
See, you have now taken your place as sons of God. You are now leading the angels in battle. Literally. Amen. Not just as a prayer warrior. You are literally in the fight now. With the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Praise God. Hallelujah. Exciting times are upon us, y'all. Exciting times. Revelations. What's the last one I gave? Was it Revelation 5, 9? 12, 11. Okay. What's the last place I stopped reading? Kingdom of our God, daughter of his Messiah, the accuser of our brother and sisters thrown out, who accused them day and night before God. They defeated him through the blood of the Lamb and the bold words of their witness. The blood of the Lamb. That's how we defeated him. The blood of the Lamb. And the bold word of their witness. They weren't in love with themselves. They, they are willing to die for Christ. See, a revelation of this will hit your spirit to cause you to be, give yourself willingly in this day. So you got to get a revelation of that. You don't get that revelation just because you're saved. Because if you did, you wouldn't backslide. If you did, you wouldn't struggle with sin so much. Amen. That revelation not only comes to you, possesses you, but changes you. So rejoice, O heavens, and all who live there, but doomed to earth and sea, for the devil has come down on you with both feet. He had a great fall. His wild enraged, he's wild and raging with anger. He hasn't much time, and he knows it. When he is kicked out of the second heaven, he knows he has specifically three and a half years. He knows it. So, whatever the devil does to you, you overcome it by the blood. The last one, his blood gives us power over all devils. Luke 10, 19. Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents, scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not. He said, that's great, but that's not a reason to rejoice, that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven, in the Lamb's book of life. Hallelujah. Come on, stand to your feet. Praise God. As I said before, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Father, we thank you today. I pray, Lord God, that this word would wash their spirits and their souls and it will find good ground to fall in within themselves and destroy any unbelief in retrospect to your name, your word, and your blood. Let the greater one within these words, scriptures arise in them. Arise, O oh God. Let all of the enemies within them that oppose this truth be scattered. We thank you for your faithfulness to watch over this word. And Father, as the enemy comes, and he surely will, as he comes for this truth. I pray that you empower them to fight 
the good fight of faith. And as this truth is warred over, and as they excel in strength and steady in what they believe, more will be given. It will take root within their soul and cause the love of God to abound in their heart more and more and pull from their eyes a level of darkness that veils Jesus from them. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We thank you for your goodness. Come on, just lift up both hands and thank God for his word. Hallelujah. Thank you for truth, Lord, in the inward part. In the inward part. Hallelujah. Let them see clearly. Let them know clearly. Let it purify their soul and make them clean. One with your blood. One with your body that we might be one with you. We eat of your truth, of your body. We drink of your truth, of your blood. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. That we might overcome from the inside out. Thank you, Father. Let this awareness, Lord, bring life to their flesh, drive out every pain, every sickness, every disease, every problem in their body. Let the blood release life. Let this truth release life into their blood. Strengthen their immune system through the life of your blood. Let their immune system be flooded with light. Let that life be carried to every cell in their body by way of their blood. Thank you, Father. It is your blood that makes us one with our Father. Through your eternal spirit, you made us one. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. By faith, we see ourselves free. By faith, we see ourselves Whole, complete. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. 
what your blood did to our spirit, it is doing to our soul, it is doing to our body. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> praise God. Hallelujah. Well, God is good. Amen. I pray you got something out of that. Turn around and greet someone before you go.